We got a yeah. special guest. My man Combo's Court. <laughs> so what's up? Man Drew, what's going on, here, man? man? How's everything? Here. Everything's good, Young man. legend, what's up? Welcome. What's up? How are you? Everything good? Good. Good. So good? So we had to have you on, man. Um, you know what I'm saying? I, I started following your podcast and listening, and you dropping jewels, but then you also got the workouts going on. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sometimes, you got the combo you know. shade going yeah. on. You, you're doing a lot out here. We got socks. Here, we got everything, man. Yeah, yeah. Tell the people about yourself, man. Um, my name is Andrew Combo Salop. I played overseas for a bunch of years, 10 years, Denmark, Israel. And then I started a podcast towards the end of my career, actually after my career. And uh, there we have it. We're 93 episodes in. Um, wow. Yeah, we're moving. We're shaking, man. We're out here. We got a lot of good guests. God Sham, God Ray for Austin, Rick Buker, Doug Gottlieb. We've had a bunch of good guests. Not the name drop, but I get some name dropping. <laughs> name name, name, name dropping. Drop. Actually, uh, took some heat uh, a couple of days ago with the whole Andrew uh, Luck retirement thing. Yeah, he came on the fire for some comments. That Who, he Doug? Did. Yeah, yeah, Doug. Yeah, yeah. Doug, he, yeah. you know, he's on the skip bail if <laughs> you say anything to get that reaction yeah. type thing. He's a smart guy. I don't even think he believes all the stuff he's talking about. <laughs> well, I know I Skip Bayless can't believe all that. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. know Skip is outrageous. I don't think yeah. what, 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 what Doug said was too wrong. I mean, he tweeted and he talked about it in the moment and we talked about it here on the show. A lot of us didn't know why Andrew was stepping away from the game. And it, it was so sudden because yeah. he was on the sidelines that day and then we get the news, oh, he's retiring. When yeah, he, but I'm pretty sure he knew. He knew, but the rest of the <laughs> yes. world didn't. So what, what Doug was talking about was what, what a lot of us mentioned in that, you know, it's, it's a different time now in sports where guys are so sophisticated and they got other things going on and they're making money in so, so many other different areas. It's like, I don't need this. Yeah, everybody yeah. got their own brand. Social right. media changed everything, man. Changed the world, right. yeah. Changed everything. Yeah. You can do what you got to do when you got to do it. You know what I mean? Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Talk about your time playing overseas. How was that? That was good. You know, I think I learned a lot about life even more than basketball overseas, you know, just seeing a different culture. I can't even imagine myself just living in New York my whole life. Um, mm. You eat different foods. You got to adjust to different languages. Even though Israel and Denmark, they speak a lot of English, but it was a great experience, man. I think it brought it, it broadens your mind, you know. Yeah. You, you just you look at everything differently. You look at everything. But it but it did let me know that New York is the best place in the world, too. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I love New York. I wouldn't <laughs> want to live anywhere else. I think it's amazing when I see the way sports can change, you know, one's life to to be able to go out of the country. There's some kids I've never even left their borough in New York. Or their block. And, and their block, right. And their sport has allowed them to see another side of the world. Like, I think that's just phenomenal. Right. So when you're in the like, moment, you're not thinking, you're only thinking about the games. Yeah. But then when it's all over, like 10 years later, I'm like, wow, I just learned a lot about life. It's even more than the games. Like, yeah. the games don't really mean that much when you look back at it, mm -hmm. you know? Absolutely. Now... Because you played overseas, and we've had this talk plenty of times, college guys, should they go, well, high school guys, should they go D1, should they go overseas? Talk about the difference in the game, the top prospects here in the, in the level of competition here, as opposed to playing grown men overseas who've been playing pro since they were 15. I mean, it's a big difference. Athletically, it might be even better here, but just like the mental side of basketball is so different overseas. They think the game differently, yeah. and there's just a different appreciation for feel for basketball, IQ. It's a lot different than here. A lot of a lot of basketball here is based on athleticism, yeah, you know. I agree. And uh, that's cool, but you know, when you get to them higher levels, you got to think the game. You got to think the game. You know what I mean? It's a huge difference overseas. It's a totally different basketball game. I mean, you see, Brandon Jennings went over there early. Mm -hmm. What he averaged like five, six. He probably should have got more playing time, but you know, this style of play probably just fit him better. You know what I mean? Like it's just they appreciate things on a different level than here. It's just a totally different basketball. It's, but I think with social media, everything's coming together and we're all playing alike. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like almost, it's very, like look at Luka Doncic, like he got some stuff in his bag. He looks like, yeah. he got American stuff, like yeah. step backs, everything, you know what I mean? So you're watching, you know, exactly. now, and you can go on five seconds on the internet and look up every great player. Right. So you kind The of, lines are blurred now. Yeah. The games are a lot more similar, but they appreciate they got great feel for basketball, great flow for basketball. Here's more athleticism, more one-on-one, -on -one, more, you know, we're in a highlight era. I guess the highlights are better over here, but yeah, that's the differences really, you know, for sure. It, it's, it's crazy to think, you know, to spend that much time over there. And uh, we definitely want to get into some NBA talk. Um, what are your thoughts on the, on the landscape of the, of the league right now? There are a lot of... What's, what's the right word for it? It's um, moving, player movement, player a lot mobility. Of, a, lot of, a lot of player movement, uh, a lot of player empowerment, guys forcing their way to different places. What's your thoughts on that? I like it, man. Like, you know, the NBA, the owners and everybody else used to have so much power. Now the players got a little more power because they realize they're following their impact, what they could do. And yeah. they move in there. I'm always going to side with the players, you know. I understand that from the old school fan point of view, like, you want to have a team that's, you know, you want to stick to one team and all that. But... 
I think the kids like the players now more than the teams, you know? Right. Yeah, you know? I think Jordan kind of And we can see that. everything all the time. I, I keep going back yeah. to social media. We can see everything all the time. So it's not yeah. regional anymore. We can't just see the Knicks on MSG every day. Like, we can see, if we have yeah. League Pass, you can see every game. You see every highlight on social media all the time. So you, we kind of follow the players more than the teams in this day and age, yeah. you know? Right. Absolutely. I've seen that loyalty shift when LeBron made those movements because it was people who were, like, diehard Cleveland, you know, fans. And then when he started moving around, it was like, okay, I'm really... I'm really a LeBron fan. You know what yeah. I, mean? I mean? So I felt that yeah, he personally. Tripped. Kind of like a martyr almost. Yeah. Like yeah. he had to take the blunt of the blame for all that. Now he everybody's did. doing it. Yeah. Now it's cool. Mm -hmm. When he did it, he was like, but there was always those super teams. Like, you know? Yeah. But I think when LeBron did it, it was different because of where he was at in his career. So we had seen super teams be formed together through trades or guys towards the end of their prime signing up with somebody. But he was the best player at a very young age saying, I'm going to team up with these guys. Had him and D-Wade said, we're going to go to a specific city together, it probably would have been better received. But the fact that it was Miami, D-Wade already had the roots there, yeah. Yeah. and then it's like, Bosh is there too, and now I'm joining up with them. I think a lot of people felt a certain type of way about that because he, he was and he still is the best player in the game. I think that TV special killed him. Oh, yeah. that played a major uh, yeah. part. I mean, that's Killed probably him, more man. so what he it was just, than anything. It was a decision. Yeah. He, <laughs> that was it. He should just, just put it out on Twitter or something. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. Lay low. Yeah. I mean, if anything, he Let the world talk, talk, you know? He doesn't yeah. even say anything. Yo, I'm going here. But yeah. I, I think it would have it hurt either way because we saw the backlash when Kevin Durant went to Golden State. And d yeah. Well, that was crazy, though. That was yeah. a little crazier because well, he just yeah. lost to that team. Yeah. Right. That, yeah. After being up 3 1 and you. Right. That was on some I can't beat him. I'm going to join him. Like, that was bad. They were 73 and 10 and then join him. That was worse than what LeBron. Broadway. I mean, because there's no, because because now it's like th there's no kind of competitive nature here because you were literally up three games to one on this team and you did not perform in the the last couple of quarters in those last couple of games in, in the series and then to say oh all right not I'm not gonna try to beat them I'm just gonna say all right let me just go run with these guys yeah. get a couple of rings and that's it I I mean I do think it was worse than LeBron but I also think that it was a atmosphere that was created by LeBron. So when you're, when you're continually, like, even now, LeBron is on a, on a move and he's trying to find the right guys to fit with him, right? And he's not just looking for role players. He wants the best guys. So if you're Kevin Durant, you've also got to do kind of the same thing. I'm not saying I agree with him going to Golden State, but you are looking to join up with guys. If LeBron doesn't go that route, maybe Kevin Durant never takes that same path and say, I'm going to go with Golden State. I'll try to win it here. Mm -hmm. But watching LeBron go to Miami for four years and then come back to Cleveland and immediately, as soon as he joins Cleveland, what do they do? They go get Kevin Love. They go get other vets to surround him with. So it's not like LeBron has ever just built up a team. He's looking for that same type of help. So I don't think we can criticize Kevin Durant as harshly as some people want to and make it seem like, oh, that was a sucker move. Kevin Durant's still one of the best players in the world. Oh, yeah. definitely. And he was, he mean, was still him, the best player on that Warriors team. Him healthy is the second best player in the world, easily. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And they played a specific style of basketball that he liked. I mean, I think no one's criticizing him for that. I think it's just the timing is a little awkward from what happened to you. Yeah, he's before. great. Nobody said. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I think just nobody's saying he's not great. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's, there's a lot of people who love to throw that narrative out. Yeah, Kevin Durant's not a great basketball player. There are a lot of who people who that feel that. There are a lot of people who feel that the, the championships are diminished because it's Golden State, even though he was back-to-back -back Finals MVP and the best player on the court. Well, the yeah. championships are somewhat diminished. Yeah. Because, but mean, he's still he's still the second best player in the world. They just, How are we diminishing him then if he's still the second best player in the world? Because they might have won them anyway. They didn't yeah. win the year before he got there. They won. They won. They won, they won two won, years they before. The year before they before. didn't. Yeah. They needed him to be great. They were yeah. good. They needed him to be special. I'm not arguing yeah. that he's the, he was the best basketball player on that team. But, but that doesn't necessarily mean they needed his, him his to decision, win. The way Obviously, he guaranteed it almost. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it would have been like the equivalent of if LeBron would have been like, "All right, the Celtics bumped us. Now I'm gonna go play with KG and Paul Pierce right. and these guys." Right. You know, he still at the end of the day, Miami he was coming off of not making the playoffs, and they still had to, had to get together. Like you know, Golden State was already established; they were already the best team in basketball. Right. And then, and they just they just beat you. That, they, so that's more of where the, the the hate and the shade came from because of the fact that you just joined a team that beat you. But had yeah. had he joined the Spurs, he probably would have had a similar outcome to what he had in Golden State, and I don't think anybody would have really had a problem with it, but just the fact that he's just coming off of losing to these guys. And, right. I, and, and I get that. So that yeah. To me, I give him the respect because he performed, right? We saw LeBron go to Miami that year, and even though for most of that season it was pretty easy for them because they were the best team, LeBron didn't perform in the finals. Kevin Durant went the opposite. Kevin Durant basically said, jump on my back, I'll carry us. Steph didn't shoot well in that finals. Yeah. Draymond wasn't really that good in that finals. KD took over. KD mm -hmm. said, I'm, I'm, I'm the man now. 
I'll take over. I'll make sure I carry us across the finish line. We've seen other guys go to these big moments and fold. Kevin Durant did. Mm -hmm. So Kevin to me, Durant that's why I respect. Great. Right, yeah, but, but that, the, that's why I respect. I mean, if he would have stayed healthy, they probably would have won. They would have won. They would have won. They would have won. They also had there's 73 no, wins before that, so it's kind of like. There's no doubt just, he's a great player. It, second best in the world. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. To me, I just feel like it's, it's overblown the narrative. Oh, he went to Golden State. They were good, yes. He made them special. Okay, all championships aren't created equal. Right. If he would have won one at OKC, everybody should have and would have looked at it differently. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Just like right. LeBron's Cleveland championship outweighs the Miami two. Of course. Yeah. I, I agree Listen, with that. Yo, yeah. If Kevin yo, Durant yo, comes back and wins a ring for the Nets. LeBron's performance when KD and Kyrie got hurt, he should have won MVP of that series, even though yeah. they lost. Yeah. That performance was ridiculous and on an individual level. The first time level. they played them. The yeah. first time they I don't know what JR them. was doing yeah. that day, yeah. but you know, oh, I mean. <laughs> they, they probably would have lost anyway, but yeah. that performance was ridiculous. Was Sometimes we don't remember that because he didn't win the, the championship. Right. Yeah. You know but you know, I mean? at the end of the day, you know, when we rank players at the end of their career or even at the end of the season, their rings is what we, is what we count. You know what I mean? Right. So it's like, regardless of how the moves are made, when you look in the history of them, you're going to count those rings. So they, As part of it. As part of the puzzle. If he finishes with five rings, are you going to put him ahead of Kobe? Who? Kevin Durant. Like, like a, Robert Ory got 48 rings, but we don't put him in that conversation. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. if, if, if KD were to finish with five, you're saying? Yeah, if, if he finished with five rings, do we elevate his career past Kobe's, who also finished with five I rings? Would. Oh, I KD? Would. Yeah, if Kevin I Durant, like me personally. I like KD's game better than Kobe's game. Me personally. But if you, but if you're someone who says, all right, yeah, I know he got these uh, these two in uh, in, in Golden State. And, and so, are we going to take away from those? Because Kobe's five, he he didn't join yeah, the uh, seventy-three play, win team. But to play devil's advocate, Kobe's early rings were with a dominant Shaq. Shaq, Shaq had a finals where he averaged over thirty points, double-digit uh, double-digit rebounds, three bounds, and three blocks. I'm not the biggest Kobe guy, but he did win a few without Shaq. No, he did. Yes, yeah, yeah. but just to play devil's advocate, if I want to say, oh, because KD won those two with Golden State, so those first two that Shaq was the MVP of the finals, but they came and was they, they demolishing came, they came, everyone. They came no, together, right? yeah. and the Lakers weren't already a powerhouse right. when they got together. And that, but that was a young Kobe that wouldn't have won those two without Shaq. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that I third mean, would, one, would, yes, Kobe was ready to win a, a title as the guy. Would, would but those first two weren't ready. If you're just looking at, at, at the eye test, right, who's a better basketball player, Kevin KD Durant. or Kobe? Kevin Durant. I agree, man. And I love Kobe. The killer instinct Kevin is Durant. different. That's what Kobe right. had over everybody right. besides yeah. Jordan. But mm -hmm. but if you look at KD, man, at, on the eye test, he's probably like top three ever. Just like right. watching him play basketball, don't care about the stats or nothing. Seven feet, handle, right. shoot. You know Every, I mean? Everything it's, that he can do. Yeah. How did you feel about those comments that Kobe made recently about Shaq, about him not being... <laughs> I took it as a compliment. Too lazy and that if he would have... Yeah. I did too. He yeah. Kobe said, yo, if this guy would have worked like Harder. he should have worked, he would have been the greatest player ever. Like, Shaq obviously didn't work like he was supposed to work, right. which is fine. He's still yeah. a top... Whatever, seven, five player I mean, ever. Still with four and that's rings, scary right? that he didn't even give it a hundred. But yeah. the thing that's is, though, how he was. what Kobe doesn't understand is that not everybody could work like him. I actually had to do it on my podcast, PJ Performance. He's big in the athletic training world. Like genetic, also, people think of genetics is just like jumping high and running fast, but it's also how hard you could work for the amount of time. Like if Shaq would have worked like Kobe, his knees would have probably been done. Right. He, yeah, probably he, have, he probably wouldn't have been yeah. right. even top 50 yeah. anymore. Right. He couldn't even he, play. He yeah. might have been Joel Embiid. Yeah, some he would have been a guy who was always hurt. Some people can't talented. work like that, right. you know? Yeah. You can't work like Kobe. Like if I work like Kobe, I probably wouldn't be able to play at all right now. Like, yeah. I mean, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, but, but Shaq admitted that himself because Shaq has always said, mm -hmm. I would work myself into shape as the season went on. Yeah. So I would come in about 15 pounds overweight <laughs> and <laughs> come February, I'm in shape now for the playoff run and yeah. now I'm dominating guys. But it worked for him. Different right. folks, different that. strokes. Yeah, yeah, he knew that. Because he was still averaging 27, 28 a game and, and, and 10 yeah. rebounds and two blocks. So yeah, it, it well, kind of yeah. really didn't matter. He could have done point. little things. He, he he didn't have to work like Kobe, but he could have done a little bit more in the offseason, stay in shape. Yeah, yeah. You you know, just, throws, maybe that he could have done like little professional right. stuff if he wanted to, not laid off the fast food just a little bit. <laughs> and it might have made a might have extended his career and his injuries Absolutely. wouldn't have came as early. You know what I mean? It would have helped him. Yeah. Would he work like Kobe? No, he'd kill himself. You know right. what I mean? Kobe just loved the game. I mean, yeah. we, we talked about it. Right. When, when we talked last week about Andrew Luck and there's certain guys who like Tom Brady loves the game. Yeah. They're guys who Obviously. just want to right. Who playing. just want to play. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other guys who like, yeah, I enjoy the game, but I'm not killing myself. I'm just it. talented. Right. You know, yeah. Kobe was killing himself up until his last day. Yeah. With the yeah. talent level. That right. He had, you yeah. Know? yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I mean, that's that's why he's ahead of most people who mm -hmm. that, that were in his, uh, his era of basketball because of that, though. For it's, sure. It's a combination of his talent and, and, and his work, I think. All these guys are great, man. It's like yeah. hard to like, you know, split. We're splitting hairs. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs>
So, and so, that's that's why I think the list is unfair. But go ahead, Trip. So can we so can we go back to to, to Melo now? <laughs> and I want to get your take on this. Uh, where do you think one is is the best fit for Melo, if any, or is he even going to get a job? <laughs> what, what do you think? <laughs> I'm just like I love Mellow Hall of Famer. It's over, man. Thank you. Yeah. It's, it's, thank you. Oh. He's gonna thank be on the roster this it's year. It's just that you know, like Joe, <laughs> like you. Joe Johnson, same thing. Like well, Joe Johnson's these, about to come back. They no, no, a couple teams we'll on. see. But these guys play a style of play that isn't conducive to the current NBA. Yeah, and thank if you, you don't play that style of play, exactly. you got to be super elite. Yeah. Like if you're not like a three and D guy that could catch and shoot threes, like he's not amazing catch and shoot and he's not a switchable defender so and he wants to be a go-to guy i mean it's tough for mellow and i love mellow man yeah, mellow's the man so mellow's a hall of famer no team he's one of the greatest scores that's on right now well i guess brooklyn for the reason that this year doesn't really count too much nobody expects anything out he could be like yeah. a placeholder like he could we could just have a farewell tour from him if you they're want gonna, they're gonna need a small forward i mean you, you know what you know what's like listening to you myself know, talk here you know what, <laughs> you know what mellow could have done you got two i'm, Eric's I'm, on the I'm sorry to be that guy but <laughs> mellow should have saw what's coming earlier like he likes to be in the gym doing a lot of skill development stuff he needed to get on the track and run straight lines as fast as he can get on the hill run work on his body He's like doing skill development all day. Like yeah. nobody wants to see forty-eight jab steps at the elbow anymore. It's over for yeah, that. I Thank think a you. lot of veterans kind of kind of uh, struggle in that regard of not making those adjustments to yeah. the style of play that there is. You know, yeah. like Trevor Ariza fits perfectly for the current NBA. Right. Yeah. You know, three and B right. can DJ catch and Tucker. shoot. That's He's nowhere he near the level of player right. Carmelo, yeah. but he might help a team more than Joe Johnson right now, more than Carmelo, yeah. like yeah. a championship team. He yeah. might help them more. You know, yeah. we're 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 all nostalgic about Melo because. Mello is truly a heart of no he he's the last of, of a dying breed yeah they're those type of players right that 90s early 2000 ball hero ball like i said jacking up a lot of shot a lot of iso ball is gone and Mello's like our last connection to that yeah. so that's why yeah. so many people i think are so like no mellow has got to be on the team i need to see him a little bit more yeah those days are done and, he, and i love Mello. Yeah. i love Mello, but he as Andrew just said, though. that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. Melo doesn't do any, anything. As, else. as Andrew just said, like if you take him on, right? So people who say, "Oh, he he can be on the roster." Yes, he can be on the roster, but is he going to be comfortable playing twenty minutes a night and only getting four or five shots? He's not. Even if he plays forty minutes for Brooklyn and averages twenty, twenty three, like what does it do? Like I don't know. Nothing. I guess he'll yeah. put fans in the seats for the people that want to see him play. I mean, yeah. I, that's Honestly, important. So that would probably be the worst thing they could do. Because yeah. if they're truly trying to build up this culture that they talk about. The last thing you want is Kyrie and Melo playing iso ball all season, and then next year now you try to figure out a way to in implement Kevin Durant into that. It's so the the the, the iso ball that Kyrie plays is so different because he's kind of operating from the top and there's right. still spacing. Yeah. Like I forgot yeah, to I had this dude in my podcast. Shooter. I kind of said how Jamal Crawford is kind of an iso player, mm -hmm. but it's a little bit different when you're operating from the right. top and there's spacing. Right. Like yeah. you just got Melo at the elbow doing That's 40 it. jab That's steps, it. taking yeah. up half the court. Come on, you got Yeah, you got to be in Chris down. Brickley's gym all day playing one on ones. Like <laughs> so, I, I don't want to be the me like the guy not to like to be. Trust me, you're no, not. I'm, 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 I'm that guy already. I'm that great. guy already. So don't worry about it. I'm that guy already, man. He's a whole famer. He's and he's a fan favorite. Like the people, people love love Melo, but I mean. Sometimes when it's when it's when it's over, it's, it's over. over, man. I do think that he'll wind up on a roster this season. No, I think either L.A. or Brooklyn. Yeah, but I, I just really but would like to know. Oh, go ahead, and I'll he's gonna that. have to kind of like swallow the pill that he's not gonna be a go-to guy though too. And yeah. my uncle's probably gonna hate me for saying this, but my uncle Kurt Thomas, who played in the league for mm -hmm. a lot of years, he I had this conversation with him towards the end of his career, and I think he was at a state the last few years where he kind of accepted like. He was chilling, <laughs> like, for real. Like, not that he was chilling, but he realized the difference of the style of play and being a veteran. I mean, he was the oldest in the league when he retired. He but was a locker room guy at that point. Yeah, right. at that point, he was yeah. really, like, you know, he switching. He went to Bulls, he went to the Knicks, and, you know, I think he kind of, he swallowed that pill, and I think that Melo is reaching that, like, veteran that's kind of old school and not really with the new situation, and it's a hard pill to swallow when you're, like, well, he's, nah. he's, time he's flies. Like, I still no think more. of O'Kill Melo. Like, it flies, yeah. but you so, know what I mean? He he's not a freshman anymore. anymore. In a statement uh, interview that, that he could actually take a back seat and, and kind of be a team player. Yeah. But we won't know that until he's actually on the NBA roster. Right. If he does come to the to the Nets, though, I will say this. That will probably add on even more 
for the 2K tournament this year when we get back up to the Barclays Center. <laughs> so I think for for us, for our purposes, that probably would be better. I don't know if I necessarily want him on the Nets, but again, for the 2K tournament, you know, to have him out, you know, out the belt, then you exactly. know. If he wants to play in the NBA, catch and shoot, Melo, try your best on defense, and then the buckets will happen. That's my that would be my advice to him right. if I had him in my, if I was in his ear. It might be a little late in Melo's career. For, yeah, he should have saw that curve earlier. Defense. You know, right? At this point, it's like every like everybody who is like did really well on Instagram did it before Instagram was cool. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like the same kind of thing. You got to see that wave coming right. before it comes. Right. right. You know. And he's older, guarding younger guys now. So I don't know if that yeah, defense is going to be That's no, why I don't know. Now. I don't know if he, he. I don't think he was really honest with himself during the interview with Stephen A. Smith. Right. Like he. Yeah. He's saying all these things about. Well, he was honest in his head. I think he was a very honest interview. I mean, I guess he's maybe in not his self-aware head. is what you're saying. Right. Uh, maybe yeah. Yeah, self-aware <laughs> is probably a better way. Like. Yeah. You know, you got to understand, like, are you going to be happy going to a, let's say if you are on a contender and you're only getting 15 minutes a night, are you cool with that? Are you okay with being uh, maybe the third guy off the bench who gets some minutes here or there? And yeah, you get a couple shots every now and then, but the offense isn't running through you. A 3 and D guy, yeah. a guy who's going to have to play a lot of defense and rebound. I, think I don't think he wants the, to ever on, do that. On, on, I don't on the think roster. He's, he's dealt with that reality. But like, I think, that's on, not, any, I think on any roster, I mean, unless he's going to go play. No, no. Well, because if he's playing for a contender, then, yeah, because if you go, because I know they were saying, speculation that Philly had some interest mm -hmm. or a, a team like the, the Lakers, I think, yeah, because they're already championship contending teams. So I think it would be a little easier. But on a, on a team middle of the pack to, to the bottom of the barrel, then I think it would be more difficult because it's like we're yeah, really losing. I might as well put up. Yeah, but that's the point. If, if yeah. I'm a middle of the pack team, let's say if I'm the Pacers, for example, who, you don't need who's Melo. a solid. Right. If I'm a solid playoff contender. I don't need to pull up. With, I don't need to put up with Melo's, you know, stuff now. At this point, when I'm trying to develop yeah. my other younger guys, you don't think LeBron could pull the strings to get Melo on the Lakers? Look, so well, I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna take it to me. I know you were talking about Roy Jones always taking it to himself. I'm gonna take it to myself <laughs> right. right now. Yeah. I'm playing three on three, right? I'm about to play in some regionals, like to, <laughs> like some. I don't take my best friends to three on three. No, I take you, the guys. Take... I take guys that I'm friendly with. But I take the guys who I think are going to fit the best. Yeah. Well, like, I don't take my three best friends to play in these these tournaments. Yeah, because you want to you know? win. <laughs> I'm trying to win. According to Kendrick Perkins, uh, LeBron did try to get Cleveland to sign Melo, and yeah. that didn't happen. Did he? Did he? But, but that, that, he can make I, it happen if he wants to. No, but that, that wasn't entirely Maybe. true because they but weren't, they weren't in a position to sign Melo. They were never in a position to sign Melo. They were in a position when Kyrie had demanded the trade and New York was on a list. Mm -hmm. There was that rumor floating around that would you swap Kyrie for Melo? Right. And and what? at that time, yeah, at that time, David Griffin, who was still part of no, David actually had just left there. There was a new GM at the time. They were saying no because it wouldn't fit. Why would I trade my younger point guard for yeah. another wing player? It Play just wouldn't fit. Pretty much as LeBron. Right. And remember, the Knicks had no assets that they could give up. In the Boston deal, yeah, they get Isaiah, they got Crowder, but they also got that Brooklyn pick at the time. Mm -hmm. So it made yeah. more sense. Right. But Melo wasn't just sitting as a free agent and then LeBron saying, hey, go sign him in Cleveland, saying, no, he was on a team. It would have been a trade. Right. Yeah. Kendra Percy, he'd be fronting, man. He, he don't be telling the whole story sometimes. <laughs> well, he's pretty good, though, on TV. No, I like him. Yeah, yeah. But he, he's a KD guy, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a big time KD guy. Everybody's biased well, in some yeah. way. Everybody has yeah. friends, you know? <laughs> right. So, I don't know, man. It is what it is, man. Uh, listen, I wish the best for for Melo. Yeah, me too, I, man. I hope, I hope he does get another. Like, I don't want his career to end like with the last game. In so you want the D-Way farewell tour? That's what you want. It's not even that I want a farewell tour. I just want him to be on the roster. I don't even care if he doesn't play. Just the fact that he could be. Why? Why does it help him? Why does it help everybody else? It could be. I just because it's Melo, man. I just I yeah. feel bad. You know, it's because he's the last of the Gunners. That's yeah. why. See, listen. so so if he's sitting on Orlando's bench. Nah, the 82 I mean, I games. Orlando, I mean, you know what? No, I do want to see Melo get a ring. I, I would like to see Melo. Maybe the Spurs like do what Lamarcus Aldridge does, like because that's kind of like old school basketball. Lamarcus Aldridge yeah. is kind of old school right. type, mm -hmm. playing that mid range. But, get Lamarcus out of there, put Carmelo in. Pop, <laughs> Pop yeah. loses Melo, mind. Melo ain't gonna win no win no ring with the Spurs either. I th like yeah. I mean, realistically, if he's if he is going to like try to to get a ring, I think it would have to be L. A. or maybe the Sixers. He could probably because they don't really have a. a bench what would be now. his role on a championship team? To come off the bench and score ten points a night. I don't think he wants to do that. And that's it. But that's me, the reality that he well, has right, to right, deal with. Right, but to me, these guys yeah. who are getting up and down the court quicker. Right. Yeah. That could. But that, in a that play, don't in shoot it more efficiently from play, three. In the playoffs where the game slows down, and you know him being a veteran, he could be more effective in the playoff uh, situations. Regular season, yes, you know it's a little bit different. But I do think he could help a team out in the playoffs. What team? I think he could help the Lakers in the playoffs. Uh, he wouldn't you know? be on the court in the final seven minutes of that game. But he'd be in the game. I mean, he, he could con he could contribute. <laughs> he could contribute earlier in the game. That's what right, I'm saying. But yeah. even still, it, it when you still have when you have Clay, 
D'Angelo Russell and Steph on the court, who's Carmelo guarding? Right. Well, then, I mean, he, he could play the four. So where would Anthony Davis play? Because Anthony Davis doesn't want to play the five. Well, He's going to have to, though. In Spurs, he might have to. Yeah. Well, Listen, I, I mean, well, I'm mean, actually he doesn't have to anymore because I don't even know. Like I, said, is, is I don't now. even know why we try to come up with scenarios for Melo. Melo had the scenario <laughs> when he went to to Oklahoma City. That was his opportunity to be a three and D guy behind George and Westbrook. Yeah. yeah. And all he had to do was run the floor, yeah, to, okay. get open, and he didn't want that. And why in the summer he should have been taking a million catching three shots when he yeah. went. <laughs> they were better the when court. when Billy Donovan was taking him off the court. Yeah. I, I don't see a spot for him unless he's going to go play with a team like Orlando and just say, all right, this is it. I just want to get these this last season in nah, just I can't to kind of get it on my system. Because if, because if, if, if Melo signs, he's going to at least want to play for a contender. I don't see him going to well, Orlando. Well, Brooklyn's not a contender this year. Or, he wants to play for them. He, well, they're, they're a playoff team, though. They're, they're still a playoff yeah. team. They'll, in the East, they'll, yeah. They'll get back to the, to the playoffs. Yeah, they're a low-end playoff and, team. I mean, listen, if if, if, if the Nets could do to Giannis with, that, with, the, with the guy didn't feed with to him the other night, they might even have a chance. That uh, 6'4", 40-year-old dude oh, that shut Giannis down the other night in FIBA. That's a totally different basketball. <laughs> I cannot. Oh, my God. That's that overseas basketball, yeah. man. He wasn't ready for that. He wasn't ready to go back. He's got two. I'm not as high on Giannis as everybody else either. Really? Yeah. We'll get into that all fair because that's yeah. going to be a long conversation, yeah. too. We, we, we got to get into that one, too. Wait, hold on. I got to know, where do you have Giannis ranked, though? I mean, there's a lot of players better than him in the league. A, a lot of players yeah. better than him? Well, I heard you recently say. It's <sighs> rough. On a recent episode of your podcast. Yeah, you listen to Combo it. Score, by the way. Apple right, podcast. right. You got it. It's, 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 it's dope. It's dope. Um, the episode with Rick Buca was great. Um, and, and you and Rick were making the comparisons between him and Ben. So I'm assuming right. you, you like Ben a little bit more. I like Ben's potential better, the way he could read the game. I think he'll be able to unlock a playoff series, unlock a playoff series at a higher level than Giannis can. I don't think Giannis has natural feel for basketball when it comes to vision and court sense. IQ. And then also neither of them could obviously could both of them could only score in one zone. Like we like players that could score in three zones. Yeah. To um, obviously the three mm -hmm. mid range is not as essential Whoa. anymore but right. you still need it to keep them honest right. and down low they're both really only scoring down low at this point mm -hmm. but Ben got just better vision but Giannis man. will like, shoot though and a more fluid player Ben's way more fluid Giannis is a better basketball player right now I give you that but potential wise I like Ben better I think Giannis is very raw and I do agree with you I think Ben has a better feel for the game but um, my thing with Ben is is his refusal to shoot and at some point he's got to at least keep defenses honest right and I think We've seen it the last couple of playoffs where when he isn't able to dominate the ball, he drifts on offense. And that's what makes it really tough to play him in some of those series. Like when they lost to Boston two years ago and they were just sagging off him, they couldn't play him. They had to play T.J. McConnell. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because he was refusing to do anything other than just get into the paint. Yeah. Um, he's got to at least do that. At least if he can keep defenses honest with a mid-range, with some sort of motion off the ball, then, yeah, I could see him being better because he, he is a better ball handler and he has a better feel for the game because he, he, came up as, he came up as a point guard. A more fluid athlete. Yeah. Maybe not a better athlete, but more fluid. Right. right. You know? I mean, everything we're seeing from the summer, hopefully it translates because he, he's showing in a lot of these videos, he's taking a lot of shots. I think it's hard to win as a, as a, as a championship team when your best player is just going downhill every play. Like, that's not going to work when teams start thinking right. in the playoffs. So who, who, ben can really pick apart. A game, you know who what I mean? Think gets You're right. The championship first, though. You what? Know, ben or Giannis? Who gets the championship first? It depends on who's around them. But I think if you put Ben in Giannis's situation, man, he's going to make those guys look good. They have Al Horford this year and Joel Embiid. That Ben basically turns into a four when it goes into the half court. He just yeah. he goes in the short corner and just plays down low. So that's going to be a weird mix. But uh, depends I, on the fit around them. Yeah, I think the the Horford mix is actually going to work because Horford is such a good passer. Right, yeah. so you can now and post can up. Right, he and pass shoot and shoot, shoot. Right. and now you can you can post up Ben and, and create different matchups because they have a lot of length on that team now. Well, yeah, Al Horford's great. He's a switchable defender too. Right. He fits the NBA. Before sure. we wrap up, Andrew, tell us where you, we can find you on social media and your podcast. You could find me on Instagram at one two combo. That's O N E T W O C O M B O. Listen to Combo's Core Podcast, man. Apple Podcast, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts. You should work with him on your handles too if you're gonna get ready for Portland for Peace oh my next gosh. year. Cause let me hear it. Let me hear it. Spell it out real quick. M's in the game next year. M's in the game next year. Football yes. or basketball? No, basketball. Basketball. No, basketball. She played ball. <laughs> Where at? Um, I ended up running track in college, oh, okay. but not ball. But I went cool. to Towson University. So you and Melo could have been on the track running straight ahead. I, yeah. <laughs> and you guys could have gone, you guys could have gone in the gym and shot a lot of spot up jumpers. He would have been three and D. He would have been right. There you go. Exactly. 
<laughs> Close us out, Emga. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys again for tuning in for another live episode. And Andrew, thank you so much for joining us today. Anytime, man. And catch this is great. You guys are very talented. I love the show. I was I don't know much about football, but I really enjoy what you guys were doing before. You guys are really talented and I appreciate the hard work for real. Thank, thank you. you. So yeah, much. Appreciate we'll, it. We'll definitely stay in tune with your podcast. Okay, cool. All right. Dope. Tune in next Thursday. Bye. We're out, we're out. This is Deontay the Bronze Bummer Wilder, heavyweight champion of the world. And you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. Live from the camp. Live from the camp. Uh huh. This is Real Fans Real Talk. Real Fans Real Talk. We as real as you thought.